Let's talk about circumcision in Africa and all the news people have heard about circumcision possibly preventing transmission of AIDS. I've been to just about every country in Africa, and I can tell you something. Silly would be a compliment. Um, we can't deliver 50 cents worth of tetracycline to save blindness. We can't deliver food or fresh water. Africa is a very different place. The idea that we Westerners are going to march into Africa, which is so huge, so vast, so complicated, and we're going to circumcise, perform an operation on millions and millions and millions of men when we refuse to feed these people, get them useful jobs and bring them fresh water, is so naive that it expresses to me the desperation of the pro-circumcision lobby. And I, I don't know how to attack it. There's just so many ways of going about this. One is like the secondhand smoke issue. It's about human courtesy and just go at it at a point of view from practicality. Um, as I said, I've been to Africa. Men there who have been told this, who hear this figure, aha, I'll get a circumcision. I don't need to use condoms. Why would any man line up and lay his penis on the table to get it chopped if he didn't think there was a major, major, you know, plus, namely not having to use condoms? Because you can already use condoms. If you're so afraid of HIV, every man in Africa would use condoms. So the unexpected consequences of this uh, will be to increase the spread of AIDS. I can give you a lot of examples how we've done this in medicine and not seen um, the unexpected consequence, which comes back to bite us in the butt. And this will be one of them. Uh, the transmission rate of AIDS is higher after the circumcision in men for a period of time. The studies have been done in a very, very select group of men by um, major, major, fantastic, high quality, hygienic facilities with doctors who really want to prove their case. These men are lectured about condoms. These men are lectured about AIDS prevention. It's not what it would be like if we started to do this routinely. And after all, how many of these operations can we do to prevent a disease that is already just about 100% preventable? Um, and to do it on babies? <laughs> I mean, let's hope, of course, that AIDS is a curable, preventable by vaccine disease in 20, 30 years from now. But to subject helpless infants to this operation, um, believing it's going to prevent a, a preventable sexually transmitted disease, it is silly. There was a parallel study when the first AIDS circumcision studies came out. There was a parallel study that came out at the same time that got no press whatsoever. And it needs to be promulgated. And they found that if you supply fresh water and soap to men, you can bring down AIDS as to the same degree that those who claim circumcision will, will bring it down. And it makes sense, doesn't it? Um, because indeed, yes, if you have a foreskin, I could accept that germs may want to hide there and could hide there more effectively. If you have teeth, you can get decay after all. Uh, so I, I really almost don't care about, uh, about, even if you could convince me, even if it you know, brought AIDS transmission down by huge numbers, it still doesn't impress me and is not a solution uh, to the problem um, because of some of the things that, I, that I've mentioned. So it'll backfire. I, you know, on the same issue, if everything in Africa is the way it should be in the West, and by the way, the studies do not show the same thing in the West. Um, you know, we in America have the highest rate of circumcision and the highest rate of HIV. Doesn't seem to do much for us, does it? Uh, Europe, gee, we should be seeing AIDS spreading rampantly throughout Europe. Not America, after all, men in Europe are uncircumcised. So you take, take a step back and take a practical perspective and all of a sudden the whole argument falls apart. I once had an East African doctor tell me, you know, you really ought to circumcise women because I have found in my practice that circumcised women don't get sexually transmitted diseases as much and they're much, much cleaner. You know, can you imagine proposing circumcising girls in America for the same reasons that we use to circumcise men? Um, so. The data does not impress me at all. It is, um, there's something almost reminds me of Western colonialism in it. You know, we in the West, we know better. We're going to go to Africa. We're going to fix your problems. 
uh, when the real issue has to do with um, uh, preventive things that we know. Yes, you can travel through Africa every once in a while you see a billboard that says ABC on it, you know, um, abstinence, uh, be faithful, and condoms. Those are the billboards. That's a campaign. Crummy little hand-painted billboards. As far as I can tell, that's as far as we've gone. You know, we have, um, we can do so much with education and with scientific research. And as I said, this is going to backfire and make a lot of men unhappy. Uh, because when they wake up in the morning and realize what's been done, and when they start realizing how their sexual sensitivity has been altered, um, I think this is not going to be a positive period of time in Western medical history.